morning, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar and welcome to the first day of May. Today's topic is holistic solutions to common skin conditions. Now, before we get into that, I'm just going to go over a couple of reminders and announcements, and then we will get right into the webinar. So first, we have our Zytal events. Now, these events are a great way to get hands-on training, to get questions answered, and to just come out and interact with us. So our next event is going to be Washington, D.C. on June 14th. So if you're interested, make sure you go to zylo.com slash events. The registration is free, but the seating is limited. So make sure you sign up for those as soon as you can. Next, I want to remind everyone about our wellness challenge. Now, at the end of today's webinar, I am going to announce the winner for last month, and they are going to win a Camelback backpack. So make sure you stick around for that. If you are gonna, if you're hoping to be maybe our next winner for next month, it's really easy. Just take it out with you on your next outdoor adventure. Take a picture with it. Make sure you post that to social media and use the hashtag Zydal Wellness Challenge. This is gonna enter you automatically in for our drawing for next month. So good luck. And finally, before we move on to our topic today, we just want to go over the purpose of why we do these webinars. We here at, um, at Zydo, we really believe in investing in you. So we love putting these webinars on. Uh, we think that they provide useful information. Uh, we like getting to have these presenters share their unique perspectives on a variety of topics and just helping all of you out there learn how to better build your businesses and your practices with different tools like Zydo. So we hope that you guys find these webinars useful. And as always, if you have any feedback for us, make sure you email us, marketing at zylo.com. We would love to hear from you. All right, so that's enough with the announcements. Let's get into today's topic. So our presenter is Diana Danley. She is a licensed esthetician. She's a clinical herbalist, and she is the owner of the Denver Holistic Skin Care Clinic. And she has great information today. So that's enough for me. I'm gonna turn it over to her. Good morning, Diana. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so honored that you guys asked me to partake in this webinar this month. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna talk a little bit about myself for a second. So I began as an esthetician and I really quickly learned that when you're just dealing with topical solutions for the skin, you're just never going to get a result. You're not gonna get the healing that really needs to take place. So that began me on my path of holistic healing and naturopathic training. Um, I will be testing for my naturopath boards in August, and then I will be pursu pursuing my master's and PhD in natural medicine after that. Um, so right now I have a private practice in Denver. Um, I really focus on skin disorders, disease, and dysfunctions, and I see people not only at my office, but I also have the capability to Skype and do phone consultations, so I can help people all over the United States. Um, okay, so we're going to stop really quickly and take a poll. So I'm just curious to know how often do you or your clients struggle with inflammatory skin conditions? All right, do we have results? Okay, um, so let's see. We've got 36% saying sometimes, 6% say never, 17% um, say rarely, 34% say frequently, and 6% say always. Okay, perfect. So we're definitely more on the side of often to more regularly. Um, thank you for that, Sammy. So today I'm going to dis discuss the suspected causality, symptoms, and natural protocols for acne, eczema, rosacea, psoriasis, yeast and fungal infections that show up on the skin. And then I'm also going to cover how to use your Zyto to help customize your protocols to your individual clients. I'll also touch on urgent care for common skin ailments because that's been something that I've gotten into that I find really interesting and fun. Um, and I also wanted to talk about incorporating Chinese face mapping and five element theory as an additional technique in your practice. So let's just talk really briefly about what is the skin. The skin is our large, largest organ and it's a system in itself. It's our first line of defense from environmental pathogens and it acts as a barrier to outside elements. It holds our structural system together. It allows for both absorption and secretion. But most importantly for everyone to understand about today's presentation is that the skin is an elimination system. So the skin doesn't lie. The skin is going to show you elements in your body by expressing attributes at its surface. All the zones on your face are actually vectored to an organ, just like acupuncture points on your body. 
So anything from acne, rashes, flaking, yellowing, peeling, puffiness, oil, wrinkles, redness, inflammation, all that can actually point to elements that are happening inside your body. So some specific symptoms that might point to certain things would be if something is flaky, that could be a fungus. If it's dry, that could be dehydration, sometimes caused by a fungus, most oftenly. Wrinkles are a history of weakness in that area with increased free radical damage. If there's puffiness, it tends to be overactive with some inflammation. Redness is inflammation in that system. If you have brown spots or liver spots, that's solidified calcium. It could also be toxins that have accumulated in the brain that are showing up on your skin. And anywhere that's extra oily is an accumulation of fats on the surface. If you have large pores, that could point to an inability to digest fat and protein. Dark moles are a fungus. Flesh-colored moles could be fat deposits. Warts are a virus. Discoloration could be degeneration, excuse me, degeneration or toxic blood accumulation. If any area is hollow or sunken in, that could point to a stressed or overworked organ. And acne tends to just be a toxic overburden. It could also, also be a bacterial imbalance or a hormonal imbalance. So I want to show you guys this Chinese face map. Um, this is by Dr. Ruben T. Han. So basically, he has mapped out all the points vectored on the face that are connected to an organ inside your body. So we have zone one, that's the forehead, that's the emotional colon. Zone two is right between the eyes, that's your liver. Your liver is also right below the brow, that's zone 2A. Zone three is between the eyes, that's your pancreas. Zone four is the bridge of your nose, that's your stomach. Zone 4A is the cupid's bow, just right above your upper lip, between the lip and the nose, that is the stomach also. Zone five, the tip of the nose, that goes directly to your heart. Zone six is around the edges of each nostril, that's the lung. Zone seven is the upper lip area to either side of the cupid's bow, that's the small intestine. 7A is your smile lines, and that's inflammation in the small intestine. 7B are your low, lower temples, that's the small intestine's inability to absorb nutrition. Zone 8 is your lower lip, that's your transverse colon. 8A, the corners of the mouth, are your hepatic flexure. Zone 9 is your upper chin, that's your uterus or your prostate. Zone 10, the tip of the chin is vector to your bladder. 11, right out um, the outer chin from the lip to the jaw, that's your ascending colon. Zone 12 is the left outer chin from the lip to the jaw, that's your descending colon. Zone 13, which is your lower cheek and jawbone, those are your kidneys. 13A, right below the eyes, this can point to toxic blood or sluggish filtration. We've all woken up with undry bags or dark circles. Um, that's pointing to a kidney ailment um, or something sluggish in, that, in the kidneys, maybe just for the day. Some people have it chronically. Um, zone 14, the sides of the nose, those are your adrenals. 15, the cheeks, that's the immune system. Um, the sideburns are your gallbladder. The zone 17, that's your upper inner eye, that's your spleen. Um, and then you'll also notice, if I just go back, um, so up above zone 1, you can see on your entire scalp, that is vectored to all kinds of organs in your entire system. So when hair loss can happen, it's not actually that you're inheriting that hair loss, but you're inheriting a weakness in those systems that can lead to the hair loss. Um, and then those zones on your scalp can also have a lot of other issues like inflammation, fungal infections, cysts, dandruff, et cetera. So all kinds of things can happen on the scalp. Um, so we also have, in addition to the map, there's Chinese five element theory. And I think is, do we have a poll yeah, question so here, Sammy? Yep, yeah, yeah, we have a poll question. So it should be on your screens out there. Um, it's have you heard of the Chinese five element theory or incorporated it into your practice? So we'll give everyone just a couple more seconds to answer that. Okay, and we have results in. So 40% um, said, yes, I have heard of it. 10% uh, said, yes, I incorporated it into my practice. And 50% said, no. They okay, that's great. It. Thank you. That's awesome. Um, a yeah. lot more people than I'd realized had heard of, that, of it. That's great. And that's awesome for those of you that incorporate it in your practice because I think it is an amazing tool. Um, just <clears throat> another thing that you can look at your client's particular case. So the Chinese five element theory, um, it's basically a chart and it has assigned each organ to an element that it represents in order to more simply explain how these systems work together. 
So you can see here, we've got your fire, your earth, your metal, your water, and your wood, and it is a cycle. So your fire element is represented by your heart, and it's also vectored to your small intestine and your triple reproductive system. That's your ovaries, uterus, and testes. The earth element is your stomach, pancreas, and spleen. Your metal air is lungs, large intestine, thymus, and your skin. Your water element are your kidneys, urinary bladder, and adrenals. The wood element is the liver, gallbladder, and thyroid. So basically, these all work together as a whole system in our body, and you can see some of them feed each other. Some of them control other elements. Um, it actually, I could talk about it for a couple hours, but I just kind of wanted to touch on it in this presentation. Um, but basically, when you have an organ or maybe even more than one organ showing distress in the same element, you're going to want to choose herbs and therapies that support and heal that entire system or element. Um, so for more information and to learn more about the five element theory, I personally learned it from knowyourwellness.org under Dr. Matthew Hollis. So if anyone's more curious about learning more about it, I would definitely recommend looking them up. Um, okay, so basically in my practice, I utilize three steps to find the cause of what's going on in the skin before I determine what I'm going to do with a client. So number one, I'm going to use my Zyto to figure out the organ or the system that re might require the most support. Um, I like just using the organ vector that shows you which one is most out, out of balance. Um, and then I cross-reference it with the Chinese five element chart. And then I use the face map if the symptoms are detectable on the face. And based on these three things that I'm using to look at a case, I'm going to choose a protocol based on that information. Um, okay, so we're going to stop for a poll before I get into specific conditions. And I'm just curious what everyone thinks is the most common ailment seen by skincare professionals. Okay, so 41% said acne. Um, 37% said um, eczema, 0% um, on the viral breakouts, 21% on um, random rashes, hives, and 1% on uh, said other. Okay, perfect. So um, just like I thought it would be, you guys are correct. Acne is definitely the most common. Um, actually, 80% of people between ages 11 and 30 have acne outbreaks at some point. That's a lot. Um, Let's talk about what actually acne is. So it's a toxic condition of the blood and the lymph. It's when the body cannot properly remove toxic waste through its primary elimination channels, which are the kidneys, the lung, and the bowels. So the toxins are instead excreted through the skin's follicles, not the pores. So really uh, important to understand, you guys, a pore is something that we sweat through, but a follicle actually has a hair, a blood supply, and an oil gland. So we actually have acne through our follicles, not our pores. Um, okay, so when fat-soluble toxins are pushed out through the skin, they can clog the pores, and then the microbes begin to feed on this waste, and that causes a blemish. So this usually affects the face, uh, also, you know, the neck, the back, the chest, and in severe cases, really, it can be anywhere. So current Western solutions for acne, if you just go to your doctor, um, there are several things that they like to do. One is going to be an antibiotic. That's a temporary fix, obviously. Um, it's potentially damaging to the body particularly to your gut microbiome, which might already be off in the first place. So damaging it more with antibiotics is really going to set you back when you're trying to fix this problem. And it can also make it worse in the long run because you are damaging your microbiome. Um, but why it works in the interim is because it kills the microbes that feast on that fat-soluble waste. So there, there just can't be a blemish if there's no bacteria to feed on that waste. Obviously, as soon as you stop taking the antibiotic, your problems are going to return, and now you have a decreased um, immune system, your gut's going to be off. It's just really not a good cure to, to use for acne. Um, there are also going to be topical creams. Those typically, I'm sure you have your clients or your clients have experienced how much that dries you out. It cracks the skin. It peels it. It damages the skin. Topical retinoids particularly, they increase the skin's cellular overturn. Um, those actually permanently thin the skin and make it susceptible to sun damage. So, you know, a lot of people will be on those long term, and that's just really, really damaging to the skin. Um, I've also seen doctors that will inject a steroid shot directly into a larger cyst, um, and that just works to bring down the inflammation. 
Um, and then also facials, those are good to keep the skin clean and help kind of mitigate the damage on the surface, but it's not going to really prevent the cause of the breakout. So going back to my steps one, two, three that I discussed earlier, we're going to look at this particular case study. So step one, we're going to find the suspected cause. So in this example, this gentleman who actually has beautiful skin in the picture, <laughs> um, his acne is located heavily on his forehead. And then we put him on the Zytoscan, and he's showing that his lungs and his large intestine are out of range. So we have a pretty good indicator that the gut, the colon, and the lungs are out, which means that the entire metal air element needs to be addressed. Um, and when I say address the entire metal air element, you may or may not work with Chinese herbs. So if you have a blend that's for lung or for metal air, that would be just something great to add. Um, if Chinese herbs isn't in your wheelhouse, that's totally fine. But for those of you that know about this or are more curious about this, this would be a good way to implement a good metal air supporting herb blend. Um, so in this particular scenario, we're going to optimize the gut and we're going to support the respiratory system or that whole metal air element. So I want to talk about how we're going to address that. So some holistic solutions that I use for acne, especially when we're optimizing the gut. So, um, so step one, you're going to put your client on the gut healing diet. You're going to cleanse the gut, specifically the colon and the large intestine. So in all of these protocols that I talk about um, through this presentation, cleansing is going to be a part of all of them. So you're going to cleanse the gut, colon, and the large intestine. You're going to also restore healthy bacteria. So I like to use my Zyto just to see the biological preference to various probiotics because I use so many different probiotics in my practice. So you know you can scan for the different ones that are most coherent to your client. Um, I also love using the Zyto Foods for Wellness scan because you're going to find out not only what shouldn't the client be eating, but what should they be eating that's going to be helpful for them for that month. Um, we're going to also, in this case, incorporate a formula that supports the lungs, and then we're also going to support the skin with skin herbs that I'm going to give you a list of next. Um, also, on the food wellness scan, this is a really good indicator if your client does need to be avoiding things like dairy and gluten, which are pretty big offenders when we're trying to clear out the gut. Some people can get away with all those things and doesn't make them break out. Other people, they're broken out. You try to put them on the cleanest diet and it just doesn't help. So you really need to use the Zyto to help figure out the direction that you want to go nutritionally. So when I say skin supporting herbs, this is the list. This is a foundational list that every single client goes on no matter what condition they have. Um, so they're going to go on vitamin A and D, vitamin C, vitamin E, essential fatty acids, probiotics, some sort of a green powder drink or supplement, and then glutathione. So hey, no matter what we're dealing with, oh, I'm sorry. Hey, Anna, I've got a question. Um, so what about um, just in general, because here in Utah, the air is really dry. So I have really dry skin. What about um, just like lotions in general? What do you recommend with something Perfect. like that? So lotion obviously absorbs in the skin really quickly. Um, so if you're dealing with dry skin, you're going to go on this list of skin supporting herbs, but you're going to double up the essential fatty acids and you want to add a lot more healthy fats to your diet nuts, olive oil, flaxseed oil, and then topically, instead of lotion, I would use oil, some sort of oil blend that's organic. Um, salves are really great because they are thicker. They really can support the skin's barrier while it repairs itself. Um, but again, you really want to hit the skin internally. Lots of water as well. Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, thanks. <laughs> okay, yeah, perfect. Okay, so some topical support for acne. Um, I just love colloidal silver gel. I use it almost on a daily basis for all kinds of things, but it's really great for acne because it's not going to dry out the skin. It's not going to cause cellular turnover or anything like that. It's just going to make sure that no bacteria is growing. Um, a healing salve is great with tea tree oil or any sort of anti-inflammatory herbs. Um, when you're doing essential oils on the face, you can apply them neat, which means just directly if you want. Um, especially if it's tea tree, that's good for a spot treatment. And then facials, again, are great to mitigate the surface damage, but you want to make sure that the practitioner is natural, so you don't want them putting a bunch of toxic things on your face. Um, really, you really want to make sure that someone's using organic products on your face when you're going for facials. Luckily, I'm an esthetician, so I can give that to my client, but for you guys that are just, you know, wellness practitioners, you, you're going to have to outsource source that, so just make sure that you send your clients somewhere natural. 
Um, okay, so if the acne is hormonal, first we're going to locate the cause, right? So how do we even know if it's hormonal? So number one, you're going to look at your face chart. If you look at your five element chart, the hormones, are, or excuse me, the endocrine system is actually distributed evenly all over that five element chart. So if you're just broken out everywhere, it's all over this face zone chart, it's all over the five element chart, it's probably hormonal. What does your Zyto say? When you do a scan, what on the endocrine system is coming up out of range? Um, so again, where are you on the five element chart? Because the endocrine system is all over. And then has the client seen improvement in the past by getting on birth control if they're female? Um, also, if the client's a teen and they've just always had it since puberty, it's hormonal. So if it's all over the face, if it gets better with birth control, if they've always had acne since puberty, or also um, if they break out when they with, near, near their cycle, that's a hormonal indicator. Um, and then also if the client is near menopause because their hormones are changing, it's likely hormonal. Um, okay, so your hormonal acne solutions from a holistic standpoint. So what do we do first? We're going to always put them on the skin supporting herbs. Um, I like to use a glandular pack for the entire endocrine system. And I don't, you know, just depending on what everyone uses in their practice, um, specifically the thyroid can be helpful. But I like to just get all of the glands. So I use a pack that supports the entire endocrine system. You can also use your Vitos, excuse me, your Zyto for specific support. Um, and then just individual herbs that are good are chastry berries, zinc, any blood purifier is great, a lymph purifier, and wild yam and chast. Um, if it is a young teenage boy, sarsaparilla is great, that's a blood purifier, and donkai is good in girls, it's a blood tonic. And again, you're always going to cleanse in addition to all these other herbs that you're putting them on. So what are we going to cleanse? You know, I still use the Zyto to scan for if I want to cleanse the li liver, the kidneys, the colon, et cetera. So with everything else, we're putting on the skin supporting herbs. We're, we're also looking at the specific ailment that we're treating if it's, you know, hormonal, if it's the gut, and then we're still going to cleanse. So eczema, this was the second thing that you guys said is seen in your practice, mine as well. Um, so over 35 million Americans suffer from eczema. That's a lot. It's 3% of adults, 10 to 20% of children, which is really high. Um, and then 70% of cases start when kids are under 5. 60% of infants with eczema continue to have one or more symptoms through adulthood. Um, the doctors will tell you that the eczema is common in kids. Well, just because it's common, that does not mean it's normal, you guys, for kids to have this imbalance. If your child has eczema, this is not normal. But because doctors are telling parents that it's common, this gives them the impression that it's okay. It's not. This is a severe imbalance. If your child has eczema on their skin, um, especially when they're infants, they are getting some sort of, I mean, they're getting basically things that are inflaming their system through your breast milk, which means you're not eating clean. You have a lot of toxins in your blood and your body. I, you know, it's hard in America to have a clean body these days, but these are things that we really need to be, be paying attention to and addressing. So the baby is getting it from the toxic mother's milk, basically. Um, so the symptoms and the cause, what does eczema look like? It's, it's rash. It's itching, flaking, redness, scaly. It's typically in a crevice, so like where you bend or where your elbows bend. Um, I, I mean, really, I've seen it everywhere behind the knees. Um, it can be on the face, behind the ears. Um, but basically, these damaged cells release histamine into the surrounding fluids, and then the epidermis thickens, and cells multiply more rapidly, so toxins become trapped under the skin. So this is thought to be caused by irritants, such as an allergy, um, or the body's inability to break down proteins and carbs or food sensitivities. Also, it's just the body can be overwhelmed by more irritants than it can handle. So if you are breastfeeding a baby that doesn't have really any of its systems developed yet, its immune system, liver, any of that, and you're eating, you know, you have all kinds of toxins in your body and you're giving it to your baby, it's going to cause a lot of inflammation in the child that your body may be already immune to since you're, you know, you're an adult. How we're going to look at this from a holistic perspective is we're going to start with that Zyto Foods for Wellness scan. Hey, Diana. Uh, sorry, we, uh, we've got a question um, just about um, essential oils. Okay. In general for skincare. If there's specific um, essential oils that you would recommend or um, things for to help with the dry skin question from earlier or... Um, Okay, that's a good question. So you guys, if you have a Zyto, you can scan yourself 
for what um, essential oils are going to be good for you. But, um, I mean, there are so many. Like, lemon is great for cleansing the skin. Obviously, tea tree is great for acne. Um, if your skin is dry, I wouldn't necessarily say an essential oil. Maybe lavender would be good to mix that in some sort of um, carrier oil because it's nice and calming. Um, but I would, I mean, there just, there are so many essential oils and they're all so great. But if, if it's going directly on the skin, I would say for acne, you want to do tea tree and lavender, um, dry skin lavender. And if you want to like get a good cleanse, you can use lemon. Is that, does that answer that question? Yeah. Yeah. But be um, careful because lemon makes you sensitive to the sun. Just FYI. Oh, good to know. <laughs> Especially with uh, summer coming. Yes. Okay. Um, okay. So back to eczema. So you're going to use that Zyto Foods for Wellness scan. So if you're a mom, your baby has eczema, you're going to scan yourself for those foods, right? And you're going to eliminate foods that are, you know, potentially hazardous to your body that you're not giving to your child. You're going to eliminate those foods. You want to support the adrenal function with herbs for a proper cortisol level so that your body is reacting with you know, the right inflammatory response or less of one. And then histamine blocking herbs are great because that redness and itching, that is a histamine response. So whatever arsenal you have that's an antihistamine in your, on your shelf, that's what you're going to give to your client. Um, okay, you guys, food enzymes are super important in these cases. Um, food and digestive enzymes, again, use your Zyto. I, you know, I have 10 different food and digestive enzymes. I can't give them all to my clients. So I'm going to see which one is going to be best for their specific case. Skin supporting herbs, right? Just like with every case. Um, oh, also a note on the enzymes, you always want to take on an empty stomach, okay? And then just some specific things that are good for eczema is aloe vera, um, both internally and topically. Black walnut, burdock, chickweed, dandelion, echinacea, gotcha cola, kelp, licorice, pas de arco, red clover, yucca, and trace mineral, minerals are also really important. Um, also on eczema, I love to use, it's really interesting, every time I scan someone that has eczema, <clears throat> an essential oil always comes up. So I always have them just mix it with a carrier oil and put it on the eczema and diffuse it as well as inhalations or on the bottoms of the feet. So I really love using essential oils in my practice. Okay, psoriasis, not something I wish I could get my hands on more psoriasis patients. It's just not something that walks through my door a lot, but I still want to talk about it because it does affect more than 8 million Americans, um, primarily Caucasians, which I found interesting at 2.5% of the population versus only 1.3% 1, 1 African American. So in a very mild case, only 3% of the body, body would be affected. Um, typically, it starts to come out on the legs or the arms. Um, 3 to 10% would be moderate, and over 10% would be considered severe. Those are the people that also would break. I mean, I've seen it really bad, breaking out all over the crown, all over the body. Um, but I, I would say mostly what I would see or know about are mild to moderate cases. So this is an autoimmune disorder, and this has to do with rapid skin overgrowth. And I've also seen it, that it can affect joints in 10% of cases. It does lead to a really severe kind of arthritis which is unfortunate. Um, so Western treatments for psoriasis include prescription drugs that reduce breakouts um, that just stop the skin from, they stop the skin from overproducing at a rapid rate. I've seen topical steroids, and then I've seen non-steroid topicals, which are newer. I'm not really sure how those work, if they work. Um, but again, just understand with the Western treatments, all that the Western treatments are doing are reducing the symptom from appearing on your skin. They, none of these treatments are actually addressing a cause or healing whatsoever. It's just suppressing it from you being able to see it. So some holistic solutions for psoriasis include um, vegetarian diets that's been shown to reduce symptoms, detoxifying the liver, so you want to use milk thistle and cellular detox formulas for that. Increasing dietary fiber has shown to work very well. Also consider the blood type compatible diets. Um, there is a great book called Eating for Your Blood Type that I would recommend. Um, actually, probably just for anyone. That's great. It's very cool to see what you should be eating based on your blood type. Um, also, vitamin A in large doses and vitamin E in large doses. So um, also B-complex vitamins, particularly B6, vitamin C, zinc and chromium, 
feverfew green tea because um, it helps ease the irritation. And then also, again, using your Zyto Foods for Wellness Scan to eliminate those negative DR foods is great. We also have individual herbs that are great. Um, again, aloe vera, both on the skin topically and internally. Burdock, chamomile, chickweed, gutta cola, licorice root, potted arco, red clover, sarsaparilla, and kelp. Omega-3s are really important. Um, sandalwood essential oil is a good one for psoriasis. And again, if you don't know, ask your Zyto. Okay, rosacea. This is um, a chronic inflammatory skin condition. Usually it doesn't show up until after age 30, and it's experienced by people with hydrochloric acid deficiencies and poor digestion. So it typically appears as a facial rash around the nose, forehead, and cheeks, um, and sometimes it can have little tiny broken capula excuse me, capillaries associated with it. Um, okay, so Western treatments, there's not much. There's cortisol and steroid creams just, again, are just going to reduce the symptoms on the surface. Um, and I don't think they even work that well for rosacea, to be honest. That's one of those ones that you're kind of stuck with it if you're with a Western doctor. There's not a lot they can do. Um, from a holistic perspective, we see that we really have to treat the gut here. So you're going to start by eliminating the negative GR foods using that foods for wellness scan. I also recommend a blood test for actual food allergies, which is really helpful because you really you just don't want anything in there that has a potential allergy or a really negative reaction with your gut. Um, you're going to go on that gut healing diet. And then some herbs that are great are alfalfa, aloe vera, red raspberry, and digestive bitters are really, really great for balancing that as well. Um, any sort of intestinal soothing and building blends or formulas that you have are great. Chlorophyll, vitamin E, zinc, vitamin A and D, and again, the digestive enzymes are really important there. So um, when you're working with the skin, you guys, it's really important to set your client's expectation. Um, we're so used to going to the doctor, they give you a pill, and your symptom goes away. It's a little more difficult with the skin. The skin is one of the harder modalities of medicine, in my opinion. Um, you might need up to 90 days to see results and up to two years for full healing if you can't even get it healed. This might be something that you're just managing, um, you know, for the plants the rest of their life. I mean, this is truly an organ or system that is deeply distressed, and that's what you have to fix to get it to stop showing up on the skin. Um, acne is really the easiest to get rid of, but when you get into the eczema and the rosacea and the psoriasis, it's really tough because those people are out of balance and they have been for a really long time. I've also had clients that come in and they've, you know, someone's in their 30s, they've had acne since they were 16, and they just expect me to fix it in 30 days and one round of herbs. It's just not going to happen. You really need to set the expectation with your, your client that this takes time and commitment, okay? Um, but what is cool about the skin is you can see once you have them on the right protocol, symptoms will start to, you know, reduce, and you, you do know you're on the right track. You can see your progress, which is great. Um, so I like to rescan my clients every 30 days and get them back in and adjust their herbal protocol. Typically through that, I keep them on the skin supporting herbs list that I gave you. And then what we're adjusting are, you know, the things like if we're cleansing or essential oils or additional oil, vitamins, minerals, digestive enzymes, um, you know, five element stuff, what we want to support, what system we want to support that time. Um, <clears throat> just really want to drive home that true healing takes time. You guys know this, but Again, you can see if you're on the right track, so that definitely helps. Um, okay, so I want to talk a little bit about urgent care wellness. This is something that has become really a fun part of my practice. Um, it's just basically what to do with non-emergency skin concerns. Um, typically, this is something that I teach my clients how to do and deal with, so they don't have, they wouldn't have to always come in. But these are just great things that you guys should just have in your arsenal at home for if any of these things happen. Um, because typically they are urgent, and, you know, it's hard to get into a naturopath when you're going through these things. Um, so these are great things to have at home and be aware of how to treat. So, okay, rashes, hives, or contact dermatitis happens to everybody. Topically, you're going to hit it with aloe vera and calamine lotion. And when I say calamine lotion, I do not mean go get it at the grocery store because that's going to maybe be 5% calamine lotion and the rest toxic crap. So when you want, you're using a calamine lotion, it needs to be an organic calamine lotion. It needs to be in a base of things that when you look at the ingredient deck, you can pronounce everything on it. It should be, you know, 
calamine and then in some sort of carrier oil and maybe a couple other like vitamin E or something. It shouldn't have a bunch of things that you can't pronounce and you don't know what they are. Okay, essential oils, which you can add to the calamine lotion or you can just apply directly are going to be tea tree, helichrysum, lemon, and rose. Herbs, you're going to take internally burdock, black walnut, chickweed, dandelion, marshmallow, mullein, Oregon grape, pot arco, and yellow dock. Hydrated bentonite is great. That's just, you would drink that. Um, a histamine blocker, this, you guys, everybody should have this in their home, is an herbal histamine blocker, okay? A lymph gland cleanser is also great, and then vitamin A and D is great to take. Again, that's a skin-supporting herb, so if something is going wrong with your skin and it's urgent, you want to take some vitamin A and D. Okay, a fever blister or a cold sore? So the herbs for that are going to be black walnut, garlic, red clover, and St. John's wort. Any sort of antiviral formula that you might have would be great since, um, you know, cold sore is a virus on the nerve sheets. Chlorophyll, L-lysine is great. Glutathione is huge for any sort of cold sore or fever blisters. <clears throat> and in fact, if you do have chronic cold sores or even herpes, glutathione is something that you should be on permanently, 500 milligrams a day, excuse me. Um, Omega-3s are great. Probiotics, colloidal silver, and zinc. You also want to increase your green food intake, and then the essential oils that you could apply directly to the blister would be peppermint, bergamot, and tea tree. Okay, shingles or chicken pox, herbs, aloe vera, topically and internally, you can take that, black walnut, blue bur excuse me, blue vervain, burdock, catnip, chickweed, cordyceps for the liver, golden seal, because it's antiviral, lobelia, Oregon grape, again antiviral, safflowers, St. John's wort, yarrow, and yellow dock. Any sort of antiviral formula that might have a few of those herbs in it mixed together is great. And also because when you are broken out all over your whole body, your nervous system is really intense. Um, you want to do something to relieve that. So any sort of nervous tension relief formula is great to just help soothe your nervous system. Hydrated bentonite, again, silver, vitamin E, and olive oil extract, excuse me, olive leaf extract, and then essential oils directly to those pops are going to be bergamot, lavender, and tea tree, and if it's itch itchy, <coughs> excuse me, you can do the calamine lotion as well. Okay, so um, sometimes when you have candida overgrowth, you can show that on your skin. So I've seen yeast infection and fungal infections on the skin. Um, it's called inotrigo. Typically, it's going to show up in the fold of the skin. Um, in women, I've seen it under the breast. You can get it in your armpit, anywhere where there's a fold. Um, this would also go for, like, you know, <clears throat> any, any sort of fungal infection. could be anywhere, especially for athletes. Um, okay, so this rash is usually going to be red, flaky. It's really itchy. It's uncomfortable. And the best way we're going to hit it is you're going to start with any sort of candida clear or cleansing protocol. If you don't have one... What I do is a blend of probiotics, enzymes, zinc, selenium, potarco, echinacea, garlic, and oregano leaf. So you can take those all individually if you don't have like a blend. And then you're going to do the Candida Clear diet, which is basically no sugar, no dairy. Why no dairy? Because lactose is the sugar in dairy, and those little, <coughs> excuse me, the yeast is going to feed on that and grow, so absolutely no dairy, no pasta bread, no starchy or processed carbohydrates, no vinegar, and then no sugary fruits like bananas and mangoes. Citrus and berries are okay, and you want to make sure you're only doing organic produce. Okay, guys, so that wraps it up for me today. Sorry, I'm a little <clears throat> under the weather today. I'm starting to lose my voice a little bit, but um, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to reach um, out to me. Again, yeah, I also I do um, distance medicine. So if you need help, I can help you over the phone or over Skype. Yeah, and we uh, we actually have um, a couple of questions come in. This has been absolutely great. So we're going to try and get through as many questions as we can. So this first one, um, somebody is asking, do you see or work with many patients with multiple basal cells that keep growing? Any suggestions if you do? Okay, um, that is a great question. I'm glad it came up. That is not something that I'm comfortable in my practice yet moving into, 
and it's not something that I see yet, but I do want to kind of open that part of my practice eventually. Um, so I, yeah, that's not something that I would be equipped to answer at this time. I'm so sorry. Yeah, um, another question is what sunscreens do you recommend? Um, okay, <clears throat> great question, guys. Um, sunscreen, you just want to make sure that it's zinc or um, um, <laughs> titanium dioxide, excuse me. So zinc or titanium dioxide needs to be the base and it needs to be organic. And don't be fooled, 90% of things that say organic are not. So you guys should really familiarize yourself with reading an ingredient deck. When you turn something over <clears throat> and you're reading the ingredients, if it says all these weird things that you can't pronounce, it's not organic, okay? An organic sun sunscreen should really just have those two mineral ingredients and then stuff that you know what it is, like shea butter or some sort of oils, you know, things that you recognize. Um, and then with sunscreen, if you're in the sun longer than 30 minutes. You need to be reapplying every 30 minutes, but safely you should only be in the sun 15 to 20 minutes and then you should be getting out for half an hour. And then maybe, maybe you go get a little exposure and then come out. You really should not be overexposing yourself to the sun. It's very dangerous. Um, also really important to understand with sunscreen, it's literally collecting all that UV radiation. You need to wash it off when you're out of the sun. And then face-wise, I, I just really don't ever expose my face to the sun just because of damage, wrinkles, all that. So I always abstain from the sun on my face. So I always have a hat and then also sunscreen. Does that answer that? Yeah, I think that was great. Um, so unfortunately, that's all the time we have today for questions. But as Diana said, her contact information is up there on your screen. So if you want to reach out to her, if you want to know more, go ahead and contact her. And thank you so much for taking your time to um, inform us and give us all this great information. Um, I think this has been a great webinar. I have learned a ton, especially for my dry skin out here in Utah. So um, thank you. Yeah, thank you so yes. much, Diana. I was honored to join you guys. Thank you so much. Everyone have a great day. Yeah, thank you. We also have the announcement for our wellness challenge winner from last month. So that is Cesar Miramontes. So congratulations. Uh, you won the Camelback backpack. So if you out there, if you are hoping to be the winner for next month, it's super easy. Just do like you see in these pictures on your screen. Go out, have an outdoor adventure, take a picture with your bandana, and make sure you post using the hashtag Zyla Wellness Challenge. And Hopefully, one of you will be our lucky winner for next month, and the winner will receive a Fitbit. So that is the prize for the month of May. So make sure you get out there and use your Zyto bandana. And next, I just want to remind everyone that we have our uh, Zyto events going on. Our next one is going to be Washington, D.C. on June 14th. And again, these are a great way to come and interact with us to get your questions answered or to get training on Zyto. So if you're interested, go to zyto.com slash events. And next, since it is the first day of May, we are going to have exciting savings and sales going on for the month of May. So make sure you visit zyto.com to find out what all of those special deals are going to be. And finally, make sure you join us next month. So next month's webinar is going to be addressing the biliary system for detoxification and optimal health. That is going to be with Tina Carter. That is going to be on June 5th, the same time as always, 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. And that's it for today's webinar. Thank you so much for joining us, and we hope to see you next time. Mm -hmm.